Hey everybody, Robot here, Vespa Motorsports, ScooterWest.com. What do I got here? Oh, it's a GTS that's kind of been uh, laid down on its right side. Unfortunately, with two wheels, the inevitable eventually happens to everybody over all the years of riding. For whatever reason, I don't know what happened with the customer who owns this scooter. He didn't get hurt, but he slid the scooter down the road. So um, there's two things that happened with this scooter when it went down the road. Um, well, obvious, the cosmetic damage to the paint. The trim's pretty damaged here. Muffler shield's damaged. But the big thing that happened was, I think he clipped a, um, a curb or something and cracked the engine case. And here I have the old engine case. Yeah, sorry, I'm not doing a whole video of how to rebuild the engine from scratch, but someday I'll get to doing a whole video. I have, there's another video of how to take the top end off and put the Melosi one top end on, which is identical to installing a top, stock top end and pulling the motor out and all that. But you can see this is the oil uh, drain, where the strainer and the drain is on a GTS, 250 or 300. And it's no longer perfectly round. So something hit quite hard right here, and it pushed that in, made a crack form. The customer attempted to seal it up with uh, JB Weld, which is a pretty much like epoxy with like metal filings. You see it didn't really work all that well. You can see all the oil grind that's all over the motor. Um, so I went ahead and pulled the whole motor out. With any of the in engines found on all these modern Vespas, they have two categories of the crankshafts, which is like the, the tolerances of the, uh, the main bearings. Uh, so I determined which one it needed, replaced the engine case, which is essentially just pull all the guts out of the motor and put them into a new engine case. So that's already been completed. I've taken the scooter on a test ride, refilled the oil, refilled the coolant, all that kind of fun stuff. It's all running perfect. It's only got, I think, 3,400 miles. So a major repair, like replacing the engine cases, it's, you know, it's definitely worthwhile doing something like this versus throwing some unknown used motor that has who knows how many miles or some problems with it. I know a lot of people want to find used motors, but they're kind of hit or miss. You know, you never know what the, the history of the motor. I would, I'd always be uh, more inclined to rebuild what I got. That's just, I don't know, on my own personal stuff or if it's a low miles scooter like this. But today I'm gonna go into replacing this trim. On our YouTube channel, we do have a, um, another video that talks about the different trims we have available. We have this trim available as a pair in black. And I think it's a 577 181-BK, and it's a pair, pair of these silver trims, but they're in black. Um, and if it's the factory silver trim, you can get them as individual parts. So the right hand's 577-181, left hand's 577-180. Uh, just gonna replace this side. The customer's not opting to do all the, the paint and body work, which is a whole nother video in its, its own. We do quite a bit of those kind of repairs here, uh, whether it's crash repairs or full-blown customs where I'll change the color of a scooter, um, kind of get to the point. But paint and body work, it's a lot of people think, oh, you just tape off the seat, the engine, start spraying. No, it's not that simple. Usually, if I was going to do a complete uh, paint job on this, I would tear this whole entire scooter down, you know, short of pulling the motor for a job like this. You know, I mean, I'd probably pull the fuel tank out, which is right here. You see the skirt's already taken off, pop that, you know, so the body guy can do all the metal work to the dent. You know, with, with body work, it's all kind of hidden underneath the paint. So, you know, you get a lot of, a lot of shops that will do kind of subpar body work, you know, just to get the job done where it looks great, but they'll paint over all these rubber bits. Um, they'll just fill this with body filler, essentially Bondo, not pop the dent out. It's just kind of tacky work. Unfortunately, you know, it's a lot of work to do good good body work on these Vespas. Uh, let's get right to doing the trim. See me talking here. A couple tools needed. Uh, Phillips number two, Phillips number three. You know, this is a number three Phillips. And number two is the smaller size. Um, if it's a later scooter, like pretty much 2010 or later on the 300s, it's gonna be Torx fasteners. So the T25 Torx. Um, 
Also, you need to remove this uh, the skirt if you're gonna change out this trim. I already have that removed. To show you what's, what's there, there's a single screw here and there's a nut that you can spin off with a small socket or wrench from the rear. And that's on the 250s and 300s. That's how these uh, side skirts attach. In one side note, you could just buy this, this skirt pre-painted and they're pretty affordable from Piaggio versus repainting something that's been ground down like this. Unfortunately with the body, you know, the body, it's usually a lot more economical to do paint and body work to the existing frame versus a frame replacement. You know, frame replacement, I mean, you're starting at at least $2,000 for a painted frame, pretty much. And that doesn't include all the other parts that attach to the frame and, and the countless hours to swap everything over. Uh, muffler shield's pretty simple to replace, just three screws. Sometimes the screws get a little damaged. Um, this part, again, it's pretty inexpensive to replace. But as I suggested, the customer just wants to clean up a little bit. We'll do some touch-up work after we're done. But I'm gonna jump into pulling the glove box off. And I don't know if you watch a lot of other, my other videos of GTSs, I've had the glove box off in other videos, same with the floorboard. But you pretty much have to take those parts off to do this job. So a small flat blade screwdriver, just carefully go into the pry hole and carefully pry that badge off reveals a single screw under there. And I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna do all these with a screw gun, so it's gonna go pretty quick. So screw there, shift the uh, cover up. GTS 250s have the little light, you can just pull the light out or disconnect the connector. Set the parts aside, including the screw, because there's a couple different styles of fasteners on these scooters. Got two screws under here. And so what I'll do is I'll have a magnetic tray of everything that's to the glove box and I'll show you all the fasteners that go with the glove box. All right, back here, you got the two knee pads, as I call them. I don't know why, I just always have called them that. Two long screws that pull out. Turn the handlebars to the left. Reveals the coolant. Set those aside. Coolant cap comes off. The scooter's nice and cool, so there's no issue here. Got a screw on both the right and the left side. If I had this magnetized, it'd be even easier. But so those two screws are out. Down below, you can see the glove box has popped off. There's gonna be a clip under here, and I'm normally it's gonna be attached to the floorboard, but when they got in a wreck, it kind of pulled this all away. So that screw's already missing. So it popped that screw out. I have to replace that screw. This little thing, I'll show you the clip that's gonna. I can tell you one thing: somebody put the wrong screw here. This should be a screw that's about half the size here, and that's kind of dangerous because there is a coolant hose that runs there. And when I assemble it, I'll show you the correct screws that go in there. So. This is the first time I've serviced this scooter, so you know, somebody might have had a part for some other various reason. That's the correct screw, and there's the short screw. Open the glove box, get the key out of the way. Got a single screw right here. And you normally could use a number three Phillips, but it's not all that tight, so I just went ahead and used my power driver. One thing I always find, see how this is all loose? We'll go ahead and correct that when we put the glove box back together. Very common problem with the 250s and 300s that glove box wants to come apart like that. Um, grab a rag, put it across here. And I'll tell you, the glove box comes off a lot easier if the handlebars aren't installed, but you know, I don't have that luxury and it's, it's not that much. It's a lot more work to take the handlebars all off. I mean, if I was doing a full crash job or something, I'd have the handlebars out of the way. So kind of got to work the glove box off. Is what it, It's hanging up on the, um, the fan motor for the, um, what do you call that? Cool, cooling fan. So I just kind of pull it away. And in front, there's these two tabs that kind of want to hang, hang up on this, this immobilizer antenna. 
Yeah, so you kind of, I just kind of pry it apart. And you can see I put the rag here so you kind of, you're not digging the bottom of the glove box. Got a couple things that we got to disconnect here. Here's the seat release button. This is accessory connectors and different models have different numbers of connectors. So don't be alarmed if it's different on yours. This is your fuse block. And you want to pull up on this little tab very carefully. And that's how you release it. This tab is real fragile. I mean, it broke the little tab on it. And that's very common that this tab does not survive. Um, in that case, you could put a small amount of glue to hold it in place, silicone. There's not really much reason, you know, the only reason the tab holds it, so if you push in a fuse, it doesn't push the block in. And to get this uh, manual seat release cable, we'll go ahead and open the glove box. This is how you manually can open the glove box. Say if you lock the, um, lock the keys out, you can go from the front of the scooter and actually you could hit that with a screwdriver to pop your glove box open. Say if you lock the key, for instance, in a glove box. Groove. There's a little groove that the cable pulls out of. Yeah, let me try again. There we go, got it out. So I don't know if you saw that, just popped right out. Now get out of the way. Pop this off. And you can just carefully work this like that. And you can see it's just kind of like, has like a plastic thing that flares it out. And the cable gets a little bit mingled up a little bit. Still works fine. Uh, one thing I heard fall was one of these clips. A lot of times these clips are, they want to fall off. So you want to squeeze them. You can squeeze them with a needle nose. There's clips here. You know, make sure they're all, all in there pretty tight. And here's the, the clip that fell off. So, and I think the part number on these is CM017410. If you ever need to replace these clips. I always have them here available over in service. So, you know, if they're lost or something or missing, here's the problem with the glove box, the door. Since I'm in here, I just want to fix that. You got to be careful using a gun like this. I'm going to set the clutch down to the lowest setting. I'm used to using this, so I kind of know what the limits, but if you're not, but just go ahead. Yeah, you got to realize that these are in plastic. So now the hinges, the screws are bottomed out and the hinges are in there. The glove box will work much better now. So and there won't be the, the, the looseness in the, the hinge. So now we're all good. There's a clip again, kind of chasing the clips around. And you know what? That's just a bonus clip because I see all the clips are in place. So sometimes don't be alarmed if you find stuff like that. Um, I noticed from the factory, sometimes they drop stuff down the frame. They end up getting lost, so. All right, go on to the, the floorboard here. Here's that plastic um, push-in spacer that wasn't present on the, or I used my hands to kind of hold it. You can see it's all broken out, so I'm not gonna even bother putting um, a screw back in there, but right here you can see this cable has been damaged by that long screw a little bit. So, you know, that's why you don't want to use the wrong size screws in areas like that. So, all right, just go right to getting the screws off. I'm going to take the battery cover off, four fasteners. Only reason you're taking that off is to gain access to a single fastener here. Again, these clips, see how they're all loose? This is what I'll do, any of them that are loose, I'll just pull them out and when, when it comes time, I'll, um, I'll correct them. I can see that this is not all the way in. So somebody was either sloppy or they just didn't tighten it. See how the battery terminal, see how that's loose? Both those are loose, so I'll correct that. It's kind of just somebody didn't tighten the battery correctly in there when they put it in, so. Um, I got the skirt off on this side, so you gain access to these screws right here. So you got a screw here. It's a long kind of uh, M6 style fastener. 
a little screw right here. You can see the damage on this side. Hoot, look at that. Some little twigs fell out. And that's what I usually do is I leave this rubber strip with a, a thing. Eh. If, if you see my technique, if I rip it this way, you end up ripping this in half and break it. So what I'm doing is put my um, little bit of my finger right there and I'm pushing the tabs out. So if you see kind of how I'm doing that. I'm gonna take the whole floorboard off a lot of times when I do this job, I won't take the whole floorboard off. I'll just get it derailed enough to do the job, but it makes everything a little easier if it's out of the way. So I'll just go ahead and complete the whole job. All the same size fasteners. Sometimes they're a little rusty just from moisture getting between the, um, the whatever. It's on the floorboard, so you get moisture in them. So. All the same fasteners on this side. I'm pulling and I'm also using my fingers to kind of pry legs, leg shield edge off. Get to all three of these. Save those screws. Don't need to show this, but same fasteners on this side. And then this little guy comes off. And for the most part, all the fasteners that hold the glove box are off right now. Um, if this is all freshly painted stuff, you may want to take the foot pegs off as well. You know, these foot pegs, if you look in some of my other videos where I've removed the floorboard, there's two M5 fasteners. But in order to do the job a little quicker and I don't need to, um, I'll line them after I'm done. I'm just gonna leave them in place. So this thing's gonna be a little bit stuck in there because there's a lot of the gravel in the, the floorboard from when it went down. And I'm kind of pulling towards the front of the scooter. That little thing a lot of times will just wanna come out as well. So we got that derailed. And you see the, the, the foot peg is what's holding it up right here in the back. And again, like I said, if you remove the foot peg, it makes the job a little easier. And I would definitely do that if I had a clean, you know, soft, brand new paint job. It's a big problem is if you, if this rubs on soft paint, it's going to cut into the new paint. Let's get to this side. So there we go, pretty close. And you can see the front of the floorboard, you gotta kinda work it past the fan. If you want to, you could take the fan off. That would be something I'd do on a fresh paint job. And I'm pulling only towards the front. And the reason for that is you're not dragging the floorboard across this area right here and scratching it. So expose a couple things. We'll go ahead and tighten that. I'm going to check this. Sometimes you have leakage from these hoses here. Just stuff you always want to check when you're all in here. You know, the routing of the cables. A uh, common thing on these early uh, GTS 250s is these regulators are, uh, commonly fail. And the way they fail is they overcharge the battery. On my yellow Pacifico bike, it had an older regulator in Mexico and it failed in Mexico. So I had an overcharged battery that was boiling all the electrolyte off. Um, have to take care of that problem. But this, this regulator, if it says Ducati on the back, that's the ones that are prone to failure. And it's kind of got a more blocky appearance to it. Um, unfortunately, it changes regulator. It's, you can see it's a pretty difficult job. You want to get a wobble eight millimeter. You got a connection up here and then a connection underneath the floorboard. They couldn't make it much easier, I'll tell you that. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this trim. This is a broken trim. And it's, it pulls right off because it's all, there's like nothing really 
left on it. So there you go. Throw that in the trash. You got one thing with all this, this damaged paint under here. I'm just kind of wiping. You see how it's, this almost will buff out, believe it or not. But the new trim is mostly going to cover all this damaged area right here. Is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a touch up paint and this color is just glossy black and we sell the touch up paint. I think it's TP-90, I think. And that's the gloss black touch up paint. We have most of the other Vespa colors. I'm gonna go ahead and touch this up before I put the trim on. All right, so the reason I wanna touch up something that I'm gonna cover is this, this area is prone to rusting. If it's gonna get water between the, um, the new leg shield trim, you're gonna ride this in the rain. This is where the, the rust is gonna wanna propagate from. So, you know, all this, I'm not doing a, a particularly nice job because it's gonna be covered up. I'm just doing it for the rust prevention and pretty much just dabbing it right into all those scratches. But I'll pretty much continue on all the way down. I'll let that dry and then we'll come back to um, putting the trim on. All right, so I got all the touch up done. As I suggested, underneath where this trim's gonna go, you don't wanna have any bare metal. So I touched up all this area. The touch up paint is completely dry. So I would say it sat for about an hour. It doesn't take much for the paint to dry, even though the, the touch-up paint is technically catalyzed paint, which is essentially means there's a special hardener you add to it. It still will dry on its own air dry, and it doesn't take much time. Um, I get a, We get a lot of calls. I don't get a lot of calls, but uh, the guys over in the parts department, they get a lot of calls. They're like, oh, well, the contour doesn't quite line up, you know? You know, and they install this, and they end up installing it and wonder why it's too short down here. I'll show you the other side before I even get started on this, installing this. This is the factory installed side. Just to give you an idea. You see this? This goes about six millimeters or a quarter inch past this, this seam right here. That's where it starts. Follows down this contour. And the sheet metal stops right there. And that's where this stops. So the sheet metal I'll pull it up, why not? You see there's the metal underneath that stops. It's um, perpendicular with it, so when it drops down. So that's kind of a reference of how, or I meant where this should be installed. Even though you might not think this, the contour just lines up. And it's possible to start from the bottom and work your way up, or vice versa, down. You know, start from the top, go to down, I don't know. I don't think there's any wrong way to do it. I tend to just want to work from the top because it gives you a little bit of adjustment. And the, the top's the most difficult, so you kind of want to work from there. You can see how this, this contour, you start putting it on, but it doesn't really but want to line up. But it, once you start working it, it will, it will line up just fine. One other thing you want to do is, sometimes it's a good idea to put a piece of tape on the end of the uh, thing because it's, it's running around, around wild and may want to hit the uh, bike. So, so I'm starting here. It's a little difficult to get around this corner because it also has to go over a bracket in addition to the steel that's of the um, thing. And I'm just using my hand and kind of working it over it, not using any tools. And of course, if you have a heavily damaged bike, you may need to uh, do some metal work to it prior to um, Put, putting this trim on. Got this label here. I'll go, go about removing that after I get it installed. I'll show you how to do that. So right here is a difficult section because you got the radiator bracket. And see how I just over, just gave it a couple little, I don't know, not using a hammer. I'm using my fist as a real light mallet just to kind of beat the stuff into place. And again, there's another seam transact transition that makes it a little difficult right there and it's perfect on this end so if it ends up being short here you may need to pull the whole trim you're not going to be able to slip it up and down this um thing you know up and down so it sticks out a little further than this but that's fine it's because it's perfect down here i'm not worried about it
So it might, might have been just slightly lo longer than the original trim. That's pretty much how you uh, snap it on there. And you can see there's still some scratches, but it covers up. If you saw the before pictures, I mean, this thing, it looked horrible because the trim was all missing and the edge of the scooter was all, all damaged there. These uh, scratches, I'll be able to um, probably buff some of them out. You know, they're very, uh, only in the clear coat. Down here, it's a little bit different story. I'll do more touch up because it's bare metal. Don't see that, who cares? Like I said here, it's got the dent. I do, you know, my, the body guy could pop that out. You could go back in there, pull the tank, or you could stick a rod up there. I do have the guys that do dentless repair, like hail storm repair on cars. A lot of times they can get in there with special tools, pop that dent. And a cool idea, if you don't want to do a paint job or don't have the budget for a paint job, stickers. Have a custom made sticker, have something cool. You know, whatever, like a teardrop. Do something cool there. Uh, buy a new skirt, and then you know what? You know, replace the lever. No one ever even know that the scooter was crashed. If I had to repaint this thing, you know, you're, you're talking, it's probably, the complete job would be like over 2,000 bucks because I would tear the whole scooter down and paint the whole entire rear of the scooter just to fix that so it'd be a perfect match and look just like it did from the factory, all OEM, so. All right, we're gonna pop the floorboard on. I'm not gonna do much talking. I'm just gonna jump right into it and pop that floorboard and glove box back on. It's all working, got the glove box back on. And we'll finish the remainder of the touch up and that pretty much concludes changing out the leg shield trim. Kind of dress up your bike if it's going down. Just a simple replacement of that leg shield trim will clean up a GTS quite a bit with the touch up job. See you guys later, party on.